In this video, we will take the base mesh that we created in the previous video and use sculpting techniques to produce an almost final character model that sort of looks like this. You can also download the base mesh from this link which will also include all the other models from this series. We will use the techniques of dynamic topology to sculpt in Blender as it allows us the freedom to further define the shape and volume of our character and quickly and easily give our character a face without having to worry about the perfect topology. So the goal of this video is to have a near final looking character. So let's get started. I want to go ahead and save as this character from the previous video because I want to keep this copy just in case later on I want to come back and make changes or if I want to create a completely new character. Okay, so once you've done that, we're going to go ahead and apply all our modifiers. So just click apply, 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 and now the model actually becomes a proper mesh. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start to sculpt the details of a character. Mostly in particular, the face, because the face is the one that has the most detail. And we'll just do some minor tweaks to the rest of the body. So before we go ahead and do anything like that, I'm going to go ahead and add in a sphere. And also before I add in the sphere, make sure that this, uh, this red cursor over here is right at the uh, root of the character. So if it isn't, just go ahead and just go ahead and select your character, press Shift S and then cursor to select it. That'll move your cursor right into the middle. Now I want to go ahead and add in a sphere for the eyes. So press Shift A, add mesh UV sphere, like so. I want to go ahead straight away into edit mode and press R X 90, just like so. And then I'm going to tap out of edit mode, add in a modifier, add mirror modifier. Now I'm going to tap into edit mode again and then scale it down quite a bit to around the size of the character's eyes. And I'm going to move it in place where the character's eyes will be. So from the side view, I generally will put it around here where the eyes are too big. So let's uh, sort of define the shape of the, let's sort of define the scale of the eyes. I am going to go for a character with relatively big looking eyes. So maybe something like that. Uh, and from the front, I'll just move it in place, like so. Um, now, one thing in uh, facial anatomy that you might not have noticed is the position of the eyes is exactly halfway uh, across the height of the face. So if we sort of measure from here to here, exactly halfway, the eyes will uh, sort of meet. So you can, if you, if you can't see that clearly, just use these boxes as references. So one, two, three, four boxes around. We're going to put it right in the middle there. So I'm just going to put the eyes, position the eyes somewhere like so. Maybe the eyes are a little bit too big, so I might just scale it in a little bit. I am sort of going for the, the that Pixar style kind of, uh, Pixar style kind of eyes. So it would be nice to make them big because big eyes tend to look cuter. Okay. So now that we've positioned the eyes, I'm just going to add in a quick texture for the eyes so that we can sort of sort of see what the character's eyes look like. So to do that, make sure you have the Cycles Render Engine or EV Rendering Engine, whichever you prefer. Uh, and we're going to quickly just add in some quick materials. So I'm just gonna, uh, with the eyeball selected, I'm just going to press New. And it's good to actually name things. So I'll, instead of calling it Sphere, I'm going to actually name it uh, Eyeball, let's say Placeholder. And for the cube, I'm not going to call it Cube, I'm just going to call it our character. Okay, so select the eyeball placeholder and we're going to add in three materials. The first one will just be the eye, I don't know what the technical term is, I'm just going to call it eye whites. The middle one I'm just going to call it pupil and the last one I'm just going to call it the sclera I think. Okay, so for the pupil I'm just going to make it black and under settings viewport color I'm also going to make it black so that we can see it in the viewport. The sclera, uh, I'm going to make a new year. It just really depends what, what color eyes you want to go for. I'm just going to go for what most people have, dark brown eyes. So it's going to control C, control V into that one as well. Okay, so once you have that set up, we're going to go ahead and apply that material to the, um, the eye model. So to do that, just select the middle vert over here and press control plus on your keyboard. Then go into pupil and just assign it. So you have the pupil now set up as a material. Now I'm going to select the outer part of uh, that eyeball there, not the middle, just the outer part. And then shift right click, so shift alt and right click this edge, uh, this edge loop over here. 
and then just select sclera and assign that to the sclera and sorry and you have something that looks like eyeballs i'm also going to do one more step and turn the shading over here to smooth so that we can sort of see what our eyeball looks like all right cool so the eyeballs are now set up but it still doesn't look like a proper character so we're going to go ahead now and define the facial anatomy further okay so let's go into sculpt mode so to start sculpting all we need to do is select our main character mesh and change from object mode to sculpt mode after that we want to go ahead and tick dynatopo so that will enable us to do dynamic topology so if i don't have dynamic topology ticked and i try to paint this area not much happens that's because there's only one vertice here where I'm painting and there's not enough data for it to be able to create, um, you know, to, to be able to draw dynamically on the character. But if I click Dynatopo and then I start painting, you can see that it's dynamically created uh, vertices around as I want it. So dyna dynamic topology actually means it dynamically creates uh, vertices and edges as required so that we don't have to worry about the topology too much. We just paint freely and let the inner artist within us shine. So now it's really up to us to start to um, define the shape of our character. So let me just quickly get my Wacom pen and I'll be back in one second. Although I'm using a Wacom uh, pen to sculpt the details, um, you don't need a Wacom tablet because we're going to do so much detailing. It just makes it a little bit easier for me and I guess I can get more finer, finer detail. But it, it, again, it's not necessary to have a Wacom tablet. Okay, so now that we have that, um, go ahead and change the brush type to clay strips. And what we want to first do is uh, we want to be able to cut out the area where the eyeballs will sit. So to do that, you can either change this mode to subtract and that'll cut out. Or um, you can just click, keep it at add and just press control and click. So that's, that'll do the same thing as clicking subtract. So I'm going to go ahead now and uh, just cut out the area with the eyeballs and at the same time I just want to think about the overall shape of the eyes so with the Pixar type of character I want to keep the low the lower part a little bit flat a little bit straight the top part is going to have a nice round a round big shape but again really depends on what kind of shape that you want to go for so keep this relatively flat I guess something that looks like that. So I'm just going to cut a little bit over here as well, just a little bit. So from the side view, we have that sort of indentation. I might actually cut some off the top as well. Uh, actually, no, I might not do that. I might just add that back in. Yeah, something like that. To get some extra shape, uh, I'm going to sort of make this like a P shape. So just press control on your keyboard and then just draw a line down like that. So you get a sort of a P shape where it cuts in. Something that You don't have to do it, it's just something I tend to do to try and get that cheek shape, that cheek definition. Okay, so we've defined where the eyes have appeared now. And it looks okay from front and side view. So as if you, if you manage to get something that looks like that, that's good enough. Next step, we're going to draw in the nose. So for the nose, I tend to like to use the blob brush. So I'm going to change to the blob brush. And the nose, uh, anatomically speaking, it's halfway between the line of the eyes and the chin. So it'll be somewhere around here. But uh, since I'm going for a more cartoony character, I'm just going to press F to make the brush a little smaller. Um, I'm going to draw the nose a little higher than what it would usually be. So let's draw in the nose over here. I'm just going to go for a simple cartoony nose. Make it quite big. Something like that. I think that's generally enough. And that's it. I think the nose part is done. Um, for the mouth, uh, I might go ahead and... Uh, draw, use this clay strips brush again and uh, just let's just zoom in a little and what I want to do is I want to sort of paint in a, a little bit of a mountain so just go around like that like 
like that. Just want it to be a l the mouth tends to protrude out a little bit. Okay, so from here I'll just paint in a, a light area for the top lip. Just loosely paint the areas for the top lip. And at the same time just to increase the length of that as well. Okay. And the bottom lip as well. So I'm just going to zoom in. The more you zoom in, the more detailed the mesh looks. Okay, and for the bottom lip I'm just going to keep it simple like, like that. Rule of thumb, usually the top lip tends to protrude out further than the bottom lip. So that's just anatomy, but I guess it also, it, it, it's not like, it's not 100% true. You can have people that, where the bottom lip protrudes out more than the top lip, but that's what I'm gonna go for for this one. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and paint in a bit more of a better chin area. I'll use the grab brush and just, uh, Further define that shape, smooth it out. Actually, what I'll do, I'll use a I'll use a clay strips brush again. Cool. And just keep painting an area for the chin. Okay. Simple, and then just use a smooth brush to smooth everything out. Um, I'll, I'll just go ahead now and now start to define the cheek area. So I'm going to use a clay strips brush again. I tend to use a clay strips brush quite a bit. So this is painting the cheeks area, make our character relatively chubby. Because sometimes chubbier characters can be cute. Like so. I'm just eyeballing, freehanding this uh, this character design, mostly. Um, I feel like he has a bit of a double chin, so I might just smooth the bottom part out quite a bit. Just to define out, make him look not too chubby. Yeah, he has a bit of a double chin, doesn't he? I mean, a bit of a, a fatter chin, which is cute, but I guess it's a little too much for this character design. Let's move his uh, Let's move that a little bit there. I want to further shape out the head, because it wasn't done properly. Make the neck a little longer. Uh, let's make it more rounded. I think that looks better. Uh, let's make it a little more. Just define that shape further. quite good already of course your character design may differ from mine <laughs> every time I've done uh, facial sculpting every single character I create has always looked distinctly different from the other so it really depends just experiment play around this part should be quick and if you made a mistake you can always go back to your base mesh that's why it's always good to keep save copies so I want to save it right now actually just in case something crashes I, I quite like this design already Okay, so now that we have that design, let's go ahead and further fix up the mouth, the lips. They're not looking correct. So, smooth out this part over here. Um, now I'm going to use this crease brush over here to further define that shape. So what you want to do is just add in a crease between there. And at the end of the lips, just going to add in a little bit of that 
add some more crease there and then just move it down a little so we have something that looks like oops something that looks like that then I'm going to add in a clay sorry then I'm going to use a clay strips brush and just paint in oops not subtract I'm going to add in the clay strips brush and then I'm going to add in the clay strips brush and just paint a little area over here you might just smooth this part a little and just painting let's bring this down a bit just painting this kind of area here like so because we don't want to follow we don't want to follow anatomy too closely C cartoony pixarish characters don't tend to have very defined looking lips they tend to be very very subtle so that's why I'm not, I'm not really adding the details in but if you want to go ahead and add details you can always go like a where's the scrape brush you can always go ahead like and and, and then start to define out the, the actual shape of the lips so that part over here like so just scrape scrape through and for this one just add in more form I think that's quite enough. That's that's all I'm going to do for this. Um, we can just sort of smooth out the nose quite a bit. Uh, I might just go ahead and use the snake hook brush and just, oops, and just further define that a little. Use a smooth brush. brush and round it out quite a bit really really up to you how you want your character's shape to be I, it is a very cartoony looking nose if I have to say okay and then I'm just gonna uh, simply add in the uh, blob brush and then press control turn uh, press F to get the size of your brush to around about the size of the nostrils and then just control and click through to add in the nostrils and the nostrils tend to go almost all the way back towards the character's uh, skin and just scroll, let's keep painting it in until you get the about sort of like the, the height that you want <laughs> 